grab a, grab a Bible if you got one, or if you don't have one, and turn with me to John chapter 1. Oop, that's Luke. John chapter 1. Just John, not first or second John, just, just regular John, the gospel John, not third John. Um, so I am super stoked to be walking through the book of John with you guys, all right? We're going to be looking at the life of Jesus and we're going to be looking at who is this guy? Who is this guy, Jesus? And really seeing how Jesus operated, okay? Because here's what I know. If we don't know who Jesus is, how are we going to have a relationship with him? How are we expected to have a relationship with Jesus or a relationship with this, with this guy? And we don't even know who he is. So here in the as long as it takes for us to get through the book of John. I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know if we're going to go a chapter a week or if the Lord's going to say, whoa, hold up, stay four weeks in this one chapter. I don't know. So first John, yep. Verse one, that's where we're starting this evening. Okay. So John chapter one, verse one says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Pause. That sounds a little bit weird, huh? The word was with God. In the beginning, there was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. I don't know about y'all, but when I first read that, I was like, so God's a book? Like, you know, what's in, you know, words are in books, right? So is God just like a giant book in heaven? Like, is he a Bible floating around in heaven? You know, I, I'm a, anybody like a little bit of a nerd? Cool. I'm a D&D nerd. And so there's a, there's a monster in the D&D universe it's literally a book that has like teeth okay and it's like they'll like they try to eat you but that's what i was thinking obviously god wasn't trying to eat us right but that's what i was thinking right first okay in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god like that's that's weird right so later in john john chapter 14 it gives context okay shout out john because he explains it 13 chapters later okay now hop down to john 14 with me John 1, verse 14. And it says, the word became flesh. That's a weird one. And made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory. The glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. Are y'all still with me? What John is talking about in verse 1 is Jesus. Jesus is the word of God sent to earth for us. Like that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Someone asked last week, did God just pick Jesus? Right? And we kind of talked about it a little bit last week, but God didn't just go, hey, that homie Jesus born in Nazareth. Yeah, I'll pick you. It was, no, 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 I've known Jesus. And actually I sent him to y'all. You know what else this, this, these two verses tell us too? Is it tells us that Jesus has been around forever. Jesus wasn't just created one day because he's like, yo, those people need help. I got to send my homeboy down there to help y'all. I'm going to have to send him to die for y'all homeboys because y'all don't know how to get it right. That's not what this was. I was. Jesus has been around forever. Up there with God, the Father, right? Up there with the Holy Spirit since forever. Okay, and the crazy thing is about all of this, right? So it says in John chapter one, verse one, it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was what? Was God. So that means when Jesus came down to earth, he was fully man and he also was fully God. That's kind of interesting, right? That someone could come down and be a full human being having the same temptations we do. Like Jesus got hungry. That's weird. Do you think Jesus had B.O.? Do you think Jesus sweat? Do you think Jesus feet stank? All right. That's a... <laughs> nice. But think about it. But Jesus was down here living among the people. He probably used a rock as a pillow. Probably took a leak where everyone else was taking a leak, you know, like let's like he came down fully human, but yet when he came down fully human, he had 
also the full power and authority of his father in heaven. He was also fully God. And we see that, right? Everyone who's read through the gospels, we've seen that, right? Jesus healed people. Literally someone just touched the hem of his robe and she was healed like that. He had the full power and authority of God as well. Here's the point. Here's the reason why I'm saying all of these things is God, our, the father in heaven sent Jesus down to tell us what he wanted to tell us about himself. I know that's kind of a weird conundrum of a statement, but Jesus is the word of God. And so as Jesus was sent to earth, Jesus was everything God wanted to say about himself to us. That's what he wanted. That's why Jesus was sent because he's like, listen, like I tried giving you all the Levitical commandments. I tried giving you all these things, but I'm going to have to send my son down there to show you. Has it? Okay. Let's, let's backtrack here. Have you ever had that happen where someone's sitting there and like telling you, hey, okay, for example, I love church tech, okay? I absolutely love it. If Aiden, let's say something was going a uh, whack back there, I'm like, hey man, I need you to go back there. I need you to open up the, the equalizer. I need you to take the 200 uh, hertz. I need you to bring it down and I need you to bump the gain five decibels. Do you know what to do? Yeah, could you go do it? Yeah, probably not, right? But if I were to walk back there with you and show you how to do it, you'd probably get it, wouldn't you? I don't want you. To, I don't want you touching the soundboard. Good. I don't ever want you to touch it. So, if I were to tell you how to do all the cool tech things and just be like, "Hey, just go do it," you got it, and walk away, anxiety would surely take over. You'd be like, uh, "What am I supposed to do?" Yeah, exactly. Exactly, right? Okay, now if I were to go and be like, hey, this is what I need you to do, and I were to walk back there and show you and give you example, right? That would make sense, wouldn't it? You'd be like, oh, bingo. That's what Jesus was doing. Up until Jesus came down, God gave them commandments. He spoke to them, but finally, God was like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm, I need to send my son down because they needed an example. They need me in the flesh, to show you who I am. That's why Jesus was sent, to be the ultimate example, to pave the way for us to be able to commune with God by his blood, which we will read later that he dies. <gasps> Spoiler alert. <gasps> I know. Sorry, guys. Spoilers. Jesus was hungry just like we are. He was tempted like we are. He was... He had people talk badly about him. He was hurt by people. He was beaten by people. He had been hurt by people just like me and you. Just like us. He experienced heartbreak like we have. But let me ask you this, why? Why would this perfect God in heaven, who literally we saw, like, I don't know if anybody ever heard of Noah, our homie Noah, right? Noah in the ark, God's all powerful. He could have wiped us all off the face of the earth and been like, I'm going to start new because those people are wacky. That guy, Lance, fails. I need him to skedaddle, dude. But he didn't. Why? Because we're his children. We're his children. That's why. That's why Jesus was sent down here to earth to be the perfect example, to be beaten, to be bruised, to be hurt, to be heartbroken, to get to the point of stress where he was sweating blood. He did that for us because we are his children, because he loves us. He came down full of grace and truth to demonstrate grace and truth to us. God, who oh, Jesus came down to earth and said some really harsh things. We're gonna get into that. And you know what he also did? He showed us grace that we never deserved. And that's the tension that Jesus came to demonstrate for us. Okay. He is the word of God come to earth to show us who God is by actually showing us, not just describing it or telling us, but actually showing us. So tonight y'all have to make a choice. There's a choice y'all have to make tonight. Was Jesus a lunatic? Was he a liar? Or is he actually the son of God? We have to make that choice this evening. Because if you want to say he is the son of God and that you believe that, 
your life better represent that. If he's a lunatic, your life better represent that. If he's a liar, your life better represent that. Because it's not good enough to say, yeah, he's the son of God, and just be like sitting there with your hands in your, in, you know, in your pockets going, yeah, that's cool. Like we have to live our lives like that. So tonight you have to make that choice. If he's a liar, that means everything he said was a lie. If he's a lunatic, that also means everything he says is a lie, and that means all of us Christians are lunatics. So tonight we have to make that choice.